The Single Mom Success Podcast, Episode 22. Heather Wells and the Single Mom Blog present Single Mom Success, the place for single moms to find support, inspiration, and the path to their own success. Hey everybody, and welcome to today's Single Mom Success Podcast. Hope you guys are having a fantastic week so far. I do realize it's Tuesday and that I have missed a couple of podcast deadlines. Uh, I know everybody's out there saying, oh, she promised she was going to do them every Monday, and that clearly was my intention. However, <clears throat> I'm actually going to try and get through this podcast without coughing extensively. So um, as happens when children go back to school and the weather starts to change, they start bringing home all kinds of cooties. And so that's what today's podcast is about. The reason that uh, I have been uh, a little lax in uh, getting the podcast out is that we have been passing around this fabulously resilient bug in my house. And it's, I swear, I tell people all the time that children are just like they're walking Petri dishes. That's what they are. They are carrying so many different cooties and germs and they go to school and they meet their friends and they hug or they touch or they share things and markers and you know I I don't care no amount of hand sanitizer on the planet is going to keep every bug from getting passed along because they're kids and it happens Um, but as happens one of mine brought something home I don't know which but uh, we all kind of got it and it sort of happened in succession. You know, um, the youngest one, she wasn't feeling well. And then very soon after that, uh, one of the boys, and then it followed the other one, and then it followed with me, and then crazily, and then as sometimes happens, it made its way back around. So, like, (laughs) everybody started feeling better, and then we got hit with it again. And so... I thought, you know, and, and it's, it's probably a combination of so many different things. It's, you know, the weather changing. So anytime the weather changes, I inevitably have to deal with <clears throat> major sinus problems um, in Colorado uh, because it's, it's really dry here. So when uh, we go from summer to fall and then fall into winter, um, because the temperatures fluctuate so crazily here, like, you know, it'll be 80 degrees during the day, but then at night it's going to drop down to like 20, um, uh, in some areas. And then the next day it'll be back up to 80 and then it'll go to 60 and then it'll go back up to 80. And so, um, my, my sinuses just go absolutely crazy and I end up with sinus headaches and oftentimes my sinus headaches will turn into migraines. So, you know, we're just kind of a mess around this time of year. But then when the kids, <clears throat> when they bring home something, it uh, it tends to knock us out for a little bit. Um, we don't get sick very often uh, in our home. And, uh, it, and when we do, though, it has to be something super strong that gets us. We have really, really good immune systems. So it's got to be something major that knocks us down. And so when it it hits, it hits us hard and it takes a lot out of us. And we're usually down for the count for a little bit. Um, <clears throat> with the exception of like stomach bugs and stuff that we usually have. And they like my kids kick them out in like 24 hours and the next day they're they're great. They're good. So um, but it does bring up the whole um, germs and cooties and kids in school. And, um, one of the things that has always been really important to me is if my kids, uh, are truly sick, they stay home. I don't send them to school sick. Um, I don't wish to make other people's children sick. I don't want my children being the cause of someone else's misery. <laughs> um, so I figure if they're going to make anybody sick, we'll just, we'll keep it in family. You know, it'll just be us because, you know, we love each other and we don't care. But, um, but I have a huge problem with, there's so many instances where um, people will send their children to school sick. Now, I do understand that it, it is hard, especially being a single parent. I, I completely understand that it's not always easy to keep your kids home from school and sometimes it causes a lot of problems um i know that not everybody's situation 
is like mine where I work from home. So even if I'm sick, you know, when I'm sick, I can still knock out work. I, you know, if, if I'm not just absolutely miserable, if I'm not feeling well, um, I can lay in bed with my laptop and just, you know, knock stuff out if that's what I want to do, you know, work for an hour, take a nap if I start, stop, you know, start feeling really miserable and then get back up and work for another hour. Um, I know that not everyone has that option, right? You can't unfortunately go into the office, tell your boss, I'm going to work for an hour and then I'm going to crawl under my desk and I don't want to be disturbed for another hour so I can take a nap and then I'll come back out and, and work for a little bit longer. <laughs> so I know that that's not a feasible reality for a lot of people. So I do understand that unfortunately not everybody has that luxury and uh, um, I remember there were many times when I was uh, working in an office where the kids weren't feeling really well and I just, I knew that if I didn't go to work, I was going to be in trouble. Or if I didn't go to work, I would, you know, p possibly lose my job. Um, if I didn't go to work, I didn't have any sick pay. Um, I didn't have any sick days or time, so I lost that income. And it it's such a hard balance for, for single parents especially. Um, and I'm sure that there are, you know, um, two parent homes that they struggle with that too. I, I know that, that that's always on their mind. And um, so I do understand to an extent when some people, you know, if, if they're looking at their kid and they're like, yeah, you've got a cough and you've got the bite, you know, maybe you don't have a fever, here's some cough syrup, go to school. Um, I've been guilty of that myself. I, I totally know what that's like. Um, so it's, it's hard for me to get, you know, like I don't get mad at people really for sending their kids to school um, sick. I just personally say for me, because I have that ability to say if my children are not feeling well, they stay home um, because I have that flexibility. So I see a lot of times on you know, my social networking and I, when I talk to other parents, they're like, oh, it makes me so mad when, you know, people send their kids to school sick and it just makes all the other kids sick. And I totally get where you're coming from. I do. I don't want my kids to get sick either. You know, it's not fun for anybody. Nobody likes being sick, but, um, you know, there, you got to sometimes stop and see that there may be a bigger picture. You know, I'm, I'm fairly certain that the parents are not sitting there going, okay, you've got a cold or, or you've got the flu. Awesome. Okay. I want you to go to school and touch as many children as you can, like sneeze on them, spit on them, do whatever you can, wipe your snot all over them. You know, just do whatever you can to pass your germs to as many kids as possible. Just go, go do that. That's what I want you to do today. You know, the parents aren't doing it to sabotage your family or your children or make you, your kids sick. Um, so, you know, I, I get where you're coming from because nobody wants their kids to be sick. Nobody wants to be sick. Um, but there may be circumstances where, you know, the mom or the dad or whoever, they can't afford to miss a day of work and stay home with their, with their little one as much as they would love to. Um, you know, they, they, they can't afford to, you know, lose their job potentially because they took another day off for their kid, you know, to be sick. Um, I know that when I was working, uh, when my son was just out of the hospital, when he was little and he was going through all of the physical therapy and occupational therapy and doctor's appointments and just, it was just a constant barrage and we were in and out of children's hospital on a regular basis. I mean, I could have given tours of that place and, and, you know, to this day, I probably still could. Um, but, uh, while we were there he was in and out so often and I know that um, during that time I lost multiple jobs I lost multiple jobs you know at the time I was I was doing temp work so it wasn't like it was steady work to begin with I mean it was it was always just you know hopefully temp to hire hopefully it would become a permanent position but um, you know it was whatever I could get at the time I was doing temp work and it was it was good work it was honest pay you know it helped pay the bills and take care of my family but um, being a temp and telling people, uh, I have to be late every Monday and I have to leave early every Friday and every other week on Thursdays, I have to, uh, 
leave uh, only be in for half a day because I have to leave and travel across town to pick up my son and take him to occupational therapy. Um, you know, and that's not including if they got sick or whatever. That was just the regular have to take care of a special needs kid, you know, and do all of these things. And on top of that, I was also dealing with court and, you know, all the stuff going on with their dad. Um, and, uh, you know, super long story. And at one point I will, uh, probably my next podcast, I mean, cause I've had some people ask me what the story is behind my children's, uh, condition and what happened. And, um, so I think that's going to be my next podcast. So be sure to watch out for that one. But, um, but yeah, so, you know, having to deal with all that and constantly take time off of work. Um, I lost multiple jobs, multiple temp jobs where they were like, you know, we like you, you do great work. We enjoy having you here, but unfortunately we need someone who's more stable, who has more, you know, they have the ability to be here. And I mean, in all honesty, especially in this day and age with so many people looking for work, you know, there's somebody always in line waiting to take your job and there may be somebody who doesn't have kids. And they can be there without fail, whenever, without question, because they don't have the responsibilities that a single mom has or a parent has or a two parent family has, you know, and it is, it's a struggle. So I, you know, I totally understand um, some people having to send their children to school and just praying that they can make it through the day. Um, and I'm sure they don't feel great about it. You know, if, if they had their way, like I said, they would stay home with their kid and, and let them lay in bed and drink chicken noodle soup and, you know, get better. But unfortunately, that's not always a reality for everyone, especially in this day and age. You just, you can't afford to lose your job. You can't afford to, to miss work and not have, you know, sick pay, especially families who are just, you know, getting by or barely getting by or not getting by, you know, who are, um, you know, they're relying on government service programs to, to make ends meet or um, they're making minimum wage and, and literally living paycheck to paycheck. And if there's, you know, having done that, living paycheck to paycheck, um, hoping and praying that your next check is, is enough to cover everything. Um, I totally understand how one day, just one day out without pay can dramatically affect your life moving forward. And it sounds crazy some, to some people. Some people, they don't understand. They don't get how something as small as taking one sick day for your child without pay can totally wreck your budget. At that point, that means you can't fully make your rent or you can't fully make your public service payment or you can't afford um, lunches for your kids um, or, you know, whatever the case may be. And it's it's amazing how so many people don't necessarily know that there are so many people out there that are just one like they're one catastrophe away from not making it. Um, they are one bad thing happening, like one thing, one missed day of work or um, having to, you know, replace your tire. Like I remember a time when I had, I was still, you know, getting services, living paycheck to paycheck, just barely making all of the bills and I blew out a tire on my car and was absolutely devastated because I didn't have the money to fix it. And I, for whatever reason, I think it was just because I had a crappy van at that time, I didn't have a spare. And I didn't know that I didn't have a spare until I blew out the tire in my van, right? So he's like, you don't think about the spare tire until you need it, <laughs> right? So like... You know, I, I've had that happen before with friends where they get a flat and then we go to get the spare and their spare is flat. Um, you know, so it's, it's one of those things where I didn't think about it. And for whatever reason, my van did not have a spare. It, I don't know what happened. The, the people that I got it from, I don't know if they took it 
off and just never put it back on or like I don't know what happened um but I blew out a tire didn't have a spare and couldn't afford to get it replaced couldn't get the tire replaced um and it wasn't where I could just get it fixed it was it was blown out because the tires were so worn down because I didn't have the money to get new tires so I was riding on tires where you could see the radials they were coming the wires of my tire the radials were coming out of the tire you could see them um <clears throat> so it wasn't safe it was definitely dangerous but it was again I was just waiting for you know the money to be available for me to get new tires and um I think at one point I even asked for new tires for Christmas uh from somebody that that was what I wanted was new tires <laughs> um but uh, I, I just remember being absolutely devastated because I was like, I can't pay to replace the tire. And if I don't have the tire, I can't drive, which means I can't get to work, which means I'm going to lose my job. Um, and at the time, I was living in Castle Rock and my job was like not anywhere like I... I could probably have taken the bus, um, but I couldn't take the bus to get my kids to childcare. And it, it was just, it wasn't ideal. I would, there would have been, I, you know, I probably could have made it work, but it was definitely one of those situations where it was like, I could take the bus, but that would mean getting up at 4 a.m. with my kids to get them ready to take the bus to get them to daycare, then, you know, waiting an extra 40 minutes to get the next bus to take me to my job. Um, by the time work was over, getting the bus to daycare to pick up the kids and then ride home, we wouldn't have gotten home until like 7, 30, 8 o'clock. Um, so, you know, it wasn't ideal. Where I lived was sort of kind of out in the, you know, outskirts of, of Castle Rock, Colorado. Um, so there really wasn't a lot of options for me other than getting my tire fixed. And it was just... And it, you know, it would have cost me, I think, like 65, 70 bucks to get a cheap tire, uh, but I didn't have it. And something that small was super devastating to me. And not everybody gets that. Not everybody understands that there are so many people where something that small can cause just a huge downward spiral um, in circumstances. Uh, so what I ended up doing, I think I had to, you know, call my mom crying, saying, look, this happened, you know, I need to get a tire, or, you know, I can't remember, my aunt, my uncle, my mom, somebody helped me and, and loaned me or gave me the money to, to get my tire fixed, uh, or replaced rather. And, um, but I had to rely on that, you know? So I, I stop and think about that when, when I find myself thinking, God, you know, I really wish people would, you know, keep their kids home if they're sick, I have to stop and, and catch myself because, you know, I'm human. Everybody, everybody, I think in this day and age tends to make those snap judgments where it's just like, oh, well, blah, you know, like, oh, well, they should just keep their kids home. Um, but they don't stop and maybe realize that it's not a possibility for everyone, you know? And I think that's kind of the day and age that we're in. And, and I'm human. I catch myself all the time. I think to myself, um, you know, God, you know, maybe she shouldn't be doing blah, blah, blah. And then I stop and I'm like, you know, I don't, I, I can't think like that. I'm, I don't know her life. I don't know her story. I can't judge her because I know that there were many people who made those judgments on me. You know, like I run into that issue with, um, you know, with Gage all the time. People automatically assume, you know, because the way he behaves, well, you know, you're not really disciplining your child or you're not blah 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 or maybe she should discipline her kid and things like that and people make those snap judgments without knowing the story without knowing everything that's going on you can't know and so you know I try and remember those things I try and and think about those things um and so what we're trying to do um, for, for me, I'm trying to do for my kids is, you know, make sure that we're stocking up on vitamin C, you know, make sure that they're, uh, washing their hands really well. And, and I'm not one of those, um, 
I, I'm not a type A personality by any means, ever, any stretch of imagination will I ever be a type A personality. I, I don't think it's in my DNA, to be honest. <laughs> I think that if I ever lived with a type A personality, uh, it would be the shortest relationship, friendship, roommate, whatever. It would be very, very short. Um, I don't put things away where they belong all the time. Um, I don't... Uh, I, I just, I'm not that person where I'm like, okay, sanitize your hands every five minutes. Every, every time you touch something, um, you know, put, I, I don't carry hand sanitizer in my purse. Um, I'm not that mom. I'm, I'm just not. Um, I've always sort of been, and, and this is where it's kind of uh, weird because <clears throat> I'm sort of two sides of the coin. Um, I definitely don't want my kids to get sick, but I'm also okay with them getting sick. And I know that that sounds weird. And here's the reason why. Um, my children have really strong immune systems because they've gotten sick. Uh, they only get sick maybe once or twice a year, if that. Like I said, it takes something really super strong. Like, it has to be... And, and this bug that we caught, it was, it was a monster because it came around twice. Like, it, it was... It was, like, super bug. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but it was... It knocked us out for a little bit. Um... But it takes something like that. We typically don't just get random colds. Um, we, I don't think, have ever had the flu. Never the flu flu. Like the miserable, make you want to die, get in bed for days flu. Um, this thing with us, it, it just, it seemed worse than it was only because it stuck around for so long. It like took forever for us to just get it finally out of our house. Um, but we weren't miserably sick. We weren't like feverish. We weren't you know, wishing we could die. We were just stuffy, coughing, just that lingering, just bleh, you know. Um, there was a lot of coughing, sniffling, sneezing, you know, we were like walking NyQuil commercials. Um, but other than that, like that'll probably be the one time we get sick this year. And then we're good. It happens every so often, we get something, and then we kick it, and then we're good. We're not this family where we are constantly sick, we are constantly, um, you know, catching things. The kids, like I said, sometimes they'll get like a stomach virus that's going around that, you know, makes them pukey for about a day, um, and that usually gets passed around. They get it, one of them gets it, then the other two get it, and for about 24 hours they're down for the count. And then they're back up and back to school and hungry and fine. Um, so we kick things pretty quickly. And it's super funny because we went in for um, my kids' annual physical and for, you know, their, uh, you know, check to see what shots they needed and all that stuff before they went to school. Um, and the uh, nurse or the doctor was like, okay, so uh, your daughter needs this shot, um, I can't remember which one it was, and uh, the flu vaccine. And I said, um, she doesn't get the flu vaccine. She just gets her regular shots, but we don't do the flu vaccine. And the doctor asked, she goes, well, can I ask why you don't get the flu vaccine? And my son pipes up and he goes, because we have really strong immune system. <laughs> and here's the thing. I am not anti-vaccine in any way, shape, or form. I think every child should be vaccinated. Um... I think that it's very important. I think that things like the measles, the mumps, rubella, all of those things that are popping back up, whooping cough, all of those that are coming back are the result of people not vaccinating their children. And yes, I realize that that's a very bold statement to make. I know that there are many people out there who are anti-vaccine, and I understand that you have whatever reasons you have for your opinion. Um, as somebody who's dealt with a special needs child and who has looked into um, the negative effects of vaccines because here's part of the story when my son was originally hospitalized I was looking for any other reason for him to be there other than someone shaking my son I had a very difficult time believing that a person would injure their infant in that fashion I did not think that their father was the most stellar person on the planet, but I can't, to this day, it's still difficult for me to wrap my head around it. Not that I don't believe that it happened, because I do believe that it happened, and I know that it happened. 
it's hard for me to believe that someone would injure their own child in that fashion. Um, but that being said, when it first happened, I was trying to find any other reason because I couldn't wrap my head around that. And I looked at vaccines. Somebody actually pointed out an article that was written way back when, I think it showed up in like Red Book or something, where a woman stated that vaccines had caused her child's injuries, brain injury, and, and uh, it wasn't shaken baby syndrome. And I researched it, and I looked into it, and I read the article, and I did research, and I talked to doctors, I talked to neurologists, I talked to pediatricians, I talked to brain surgeons, I talked to all of the different people who were treating my son. And every single one of them stated the same thing. And I'm sure that there's this belief that there's a conspiracy out there and I understand and I've seen all of the hype and I've seen all of the memes and articles and and then that stupid study about them saying that they cause autism. Um, autism is a genetic condition. It is something that you either have or you don't have. It's not acquired. You don't just get it one day. You either have it or you don't. It doesn't show up like a cold. It's not a virus. It's not a bug. You can't catch it. And while I understand there are many, many people who believe this to be true, and they all will state, um, yeah, but there's been a rise in autism and blah. There hasn't been a rise in autism. What there has been is more research into autism. Just like there has been more research into brain injury and the effects that it has on your behavior, your brain, how those types of injuries and those types of conditions affect your life. There has been more research into the brain in the past decades than there ever was before. So it's not that there are more cases of autism. I think that it is just more prevalently diagnosed than it used to be. That being said, I also believe that things like ADD and ADHD, those didn't technically quote unquote exist until, what, several decades ago, right? Nobody knew what it was. Nobody realized what it was. They didn't decide that it was something that could be treated or dealt with. It was just your kid doesn't pay attention. Your kid's hyper. Your kid has this issue. Your kid is, just doesn't want to learn or your kid's dumb or this or that. So if you stop and think and take into context <clears throat> what we knew then and what we know now, it's really amazing to me how people will just say, oh, it's because of the vaccines. No, it's not because of the vaccines. The vaccines are not causing autism. They're not causing brain injury. They're not causing ADD or ADHD. They're not causing any of that. Now, I do believe that a lot of children who are diagnosed ADD and ADHD are probably overdiagnosed or misdiagnosed. Um, having dealt with a child with brain injury, I know that even small brain injuries can alter a child's brain um, and the way they behave and the way they think. Um, if you were to look at my children and not know that they had acquired traumatic brain injury, they would just be diagnosed ADD or ADHD or even potentially autistic. But in reality, what they have is a traumatic brain injury. You know, did your kid ever fall off the bike? Did they ever hit their head when they fell down on the ground? Did they bang their heads on the monkey bars? Has your child ever gotten a concussion from sports or just falling? Did they ever fall off a trampoline? Did they ever fall off a horse? Did they ever fall off their skateboard? There are a lot of things that can happen to your brain and if you injure your brain, it affects the way your brain works. So, you know, I don't believe that, you know, people shouldn't vaccinate. I think that everyone should have their children vaccinated. They should have every single vaccine that they're supposed to have. Um, 
and my children have been vaccinated. <clears throat> my son does currently have a waiver at school, being on all honesty, uh, because as not because I don't believe in vaccines. Um, it was just at, there were times where we couldn't get him to get all of his vaccines at once. So they did have to be spread out. Um, having a child with a traumatic brain injury, he did not like doctors coming near him. He didn't want doctors touching him. And when he was younger, it was easy. I could hold him and pin him, which sounds terrible, but it was what needed to happen for him to get his vaccines. Uh, as he got older, that became harder. <laughs> so we had to do one vaccine and then the next vaccine and then the next. So it became where we couldn't do all of them at once because we got through the first, it hurt, and he would not let them do the next. Um, so in all honesty and disclosure, yes, my son does have a waiver at his school, but not because he doesn't have his vaccines, but only because we couldn't get him all of his vaccines at once before school started. We had to spread them out. So I had to sign the waiver so that they knew, you know, so that he could go to school. Uh, but he did end up getting all his vaccines. Um, but that being said, we don't do the flu vaccine. And I think that's always been not because I don't believe in vaccines, but because it's one of those things where... I believe that it's important for people to get the flu vaccine when getting the flu could potentially be life-threatening. So for example, for infants who have younger respiratory systems, um, for elderly people who have diminished or weaker respiratory systems, people who have weaker respiratory systems, people with asthma, things of that nature. Um, Yes, I think that it's important for them to get the flu vaccine because getting the flu could be fatal for them. So, yes, it's very important for those people. Um, for us, though, and, and here's the thing. My kids did get the flu vaccine when they were infants, when they were younger, when they were toddlers, when they were very young. And it was potentially life-threatening for them if they did get the flu and got it bad. They did get their flu vaccines. As they've gotten older and their immune systems have gotten stronger, they have not gotten the flu vaccine. And neither have I. I have never ever had a flu shot. Not once. Um, and to this day, I have yet to get a severe case of the flu where I feel like I want to die or am so absolutely miserable that I want to make sure it never happens again. Um, and that's kind of where I stand on that. I think that it's important for my kids to, and, and that's, like I said, that's what brought this kind of topic up was I don't want my kids to get sick, but I'm okay when they do. Like, it's good for me. It's good for them if they do. It's important for them to get sick every so often because that's how their immune system gets stronger. <clears throat> that's one of the reasons why I am not an over sanitizer, hand sanitizer person. Um, because I feel that if you are constantly having your body rely on external sources to keep you um, from getting the cold or, or uh, a small virus or a rotavirus or even a stomach bug, um, your body does not have the ability to fight it off. That's one of the reasons why I feel like we don't get sick very often. And when we do, um, it's either over very quickly or it has to be something really, really strong to make us sick. Um, we've really developed, you know, a decent immune system. And I think that that's important for kids. You know, it's important for kids to get dirty. It's important for kids to, um, you know, be around, you know, animals growing up, you know, with the, you know, unless they have severe allergies, but, you know, our environment kind of helps us as we grow as children, our environment helps us build the immunities that we need. Now for things like polio and, and diphtheria and, you know, measles and mumps. Yeah. I mean, you could get them, but you know, I get that, you know, <laughs> You know, you could get them and fight them and, you know, but those were really nasty, biggie, bads, bad, 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 baddies. Um, you know, so 
Yeah, I'm kind of of two minds when it comes to getting sick, getting shots. Um, I'm for all the big ones. I'm for getting all of the vaccines that you need to get as a child to keep you from getting polio and all that stuff. Um, and the measles and the mumps and all of that nasty shit. Um, but when it comes to things like the flu, that if your body is healthy, um, if you can fight it off, I, I think that you should fight it off. You know, that's how your body builds its defenses. And that's how I've always been. Um, so I know that uh, this went into a couple of different topics. I went from my kids bringing home cooties to my son's injuries to um, a lot. Of, but it's a widespread topic. I mean, germs are <laughs> germs are big. Germs are big. Um, and there's so many different opinions out there. And like I said, I know that there's a lot of anti-vaccine people. I know that there's people that... Um, are very like it's important that you even get the flu shot uh, so um, yeah it's just I, I can't like I said before I can't fault people for sending their children home to school when they aren't feeling well because I do understand that sometimes it's it's not the best choice but it is the only choice that you have um, when it comes to uh, either losing your job or losing a pay that you can't afford to lose and your child going to school and potentially making other kids sick. You don't feel great about it, but it's something that you do, you know. And like I said, not everyone is as blessed as I am. Not as everyone is blessed as, you know, to have two-parent households where they can afford for mom or dad to stay home with the sick kid and the other one's working because, you know, they're not completely losing a day's income. They're, you know, only losing part. Uh, or maybe there is a stay-at-home parent who has, they have that luxury of, you know, one's working and the other one's at home. And not everybody has that. So, you know, I think the next time you stop and think, oh, my kids got sick and everybody's sending their kids home sick or getting to school sick. And if they just keep their kids home, um, maybe just remember, not everybody, not everybody is able to do that. And again, don't for a second think that people are sitting at home going, yeah, I'm going to wait till my kid's good and sick and then I'm going to send them to school so they can infect as many people as possible. Like, I I highly doubt there's anybody at home plotting that kind of revenge on your family. <laughs> um, so I hope that you enjoyed this. Please leave your comments below. Uh, you know, if you're listening to this on a podcast, please go over to the singlemomblog.com. You'll find this podcast in a recent post about uh, you know, cooties and sending your kids home or keeping your kids home when they're sick and things of that nature. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to name it yet, but you'll find it. It'll be on the main page. Uh, but go there and, you know, please leave a comment. We'd love to hear your thoughts on it. You know, I, like I said, I know that I potentially opened up a can of worms talking about vaccines. I think that that's a hot topic for a lot of people. People are either really for it or really against it. Um, and I just know that I'm really for it. I'm big on getting all the biggies, making sure that, you know, polio doesn't, you know, wield its ugly head again. <clears throat> and uh, I definitely don't want my children to catch the measles, the mumps, or <laughs> polio. So I definitely want to make sure that they stay safe to that. Um, oh, you know, one of the other shots, I didn't even mention it. One of the other things that my kids will definitely be getting is going to be the meningitis shot. Um, I think my boys are old enough for it right now, so they'll probably be getting that. I don't know if my daughter is. Um, that's a biggie for me. I think that's really important for me. Um, I actually, my cousin Paula actually died from bacterial meningitis. She contracted it while she was in college and she felt like she had the flu on Wednesday. She didn't feel well at all. Thursday they put her in the hospital and by Friday she was legally brain dead. It is that quick and it is that scary and that devastating. And that is a biggie. And that one, my kids will definitely get, you know, having experienced that in my family, seeing what it does, seeing what has happened. You know, my aunt lost her only child. And it's devastating. And it's not something that you just can always get better from on your own. It's something that absolutely devastates your system. It goes up your spine into your brain and annihilates it. And it's not like having a cold. So something like that, 
is definitely something that my children will be vaccinated for. And that's a biggie. And it's a, a new one. It's recent. Um, but I've seen what can happen. And it terrifies me. Absolutely terrifies me. So um, that's another big one. But definitely, um, you know, please go to the blog. Leave a comment. We love hearing from any of our listeners, all of the readers. Um, and just be civil. I know that this type of uh, topic is a hot topic for a lot of people. They get nasty. Be civil. If you're nasty, your comment will be deleted. You will not be allowed to troll and be nasty on my blog. That's not what it's for. So I hope that you enjoyed this podcast. It's a little longer than most. And if you are uh, inclined, like I said, please go and uh, visit the blog. We'd love to see you there and have a wonderful day. Take care. You've been listening to the Single Mom Podcast, the place to go for support and encouragement and maybe a few laughs along the way. Please also make sure you head on over to the Single Mom blog for more great stuff for single moms. We have resources, free things to print out, great articles. Can't wait to see you there. Be sure to leave feedback and comments because we love hearing from other single moms. And if you like this podcast, please be sure to subscribe.